Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. It's this time of year where you're going to hear uh, a lot of talk about good bid'a and bad bid'a. And I think you know why. Why this time of year. And there's this video that really uh, kind of blew my mind and it went viral that I uh, really wanted to address and comment on. So without further ado, let me play the video and, uh, and then I'll comment on each part. Here we go. Bismillah. Bid'a. Bid'a is an innovation. The scholars of the Salaf divided it into good innovations and bad innovations. Here's the first mistake. Here's the first calamity that this person, may Allah guide him, said. <clears throat> first he said Bid'a, and then he said the Salaf innovation. Then he said the Salaf has divided Bid'a into good, good innovations and bad innovations. I have never heard this in my life. The Salaf, as a matter of fact, all of the Salaf, it was narrated an ijma that the Salaf actually warned against bid'ah. Not to mention that the Prophet ﷺ before that warned against every bid'ah. He said, Kullu bid'atin dalala. Iyakum wa muhdathatul umur. Beware of coming up with new things in religion. Every bid'ah, every innovation is misguidance. He never said that there is good bid'ah and bad bid'ah. Abdullah ibn Umar said كل بدعة ضلالة وإن رآها الناس حسنة every innovation every بدعة is ضلالة is misguidance even if the people say or believe it is حسنة it is good look at that and like I said there is no one of the scholars or the salaf the companions the people who came after them or the people who came after them التابعين واتباع التابعين who said that there is a good بدعة and bad بدعة I don't know what salaf is he talking about and before we move on with the video, I want to explain quickly what is a bid'ah. A bid'ah in Islam, it is when you come up with something new, an act or a belief or a, a saying that, it, that has no proof from the Qur'an and the Sunnah. It has no proof from the Qur'an, so you made it up. Or you added or you customized an act of worship or a dhikr or a celebration or a ritual, anything like that. And you say, this is from Islam. But you don't have any proof from, from the Qur'an or the Sunnah or the act of the Prophet ﷺ or the Sahaba or anything like that. This is called a bid'ah. This is a bid'ah in Islam. It's a religious bid'ah. And this is all misguidance as I, as I said. Now let's move on with the video. Now what he's going to do is going to give us examples of you know the good bid'ah and actually only the good bid'ahs. Because he wants to... There's a punchline to the video. There's one point that he wants to the message to come across. But... I'll, I'll point it out, inshallah. You'll know what I mean. Second Adhan on a Friday, Bid'ah, <coughs> Uthman radiallahu anhu, innovated this great innovation, and that is a good Bid'ah. So now he says, he's giving us an example of a good Bid'ah. He said, the second Adhan for Friday, Friday prayer. This Uthman radiallahu anhu, innovated that, came up with this, and this is a good Bid'ah. Wrong. This is not a Bid'ah in Islam. And this is not... What, what your division or your claim is that it is a good bid'ah. First of all, Adhan was already there. He didn't come up with a new thing. He's the same Adhan, he just added a new Adhan, uh, another Adhan, and an additional Adhan in the, uh, for the Friday prayer. Why did he do that? Because people wouldn't, uh, <clears throat> wouldn't have time to reach to the masjid. So he said, let's have another Adhan so people have time to come to the masjid and reach on time. طيب. Now the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us that the khulafa al-rashideen at their time when they are rulers, khulafa, they have their own sunnah. So they can say and they can come up or rule by something. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he was warning against division and deviance, then he gave us the solution. He said, "Alaykum bi sunnati wa sunnat al khulafa al rashidin al mahdiyin min baadi." Follow my sunnah, and he didn't stop there. No, he said, "And follow the sunnah of the khulafa al rashidin al mahdiyin, the wise, the one that the ones who guide al mahdiyin. I mean, they guide people by the will of Allah, of course. Uh, so they have their own sunnah. Then he said, "Adu alayha bin nawajid," and bite on them. And you hold on to them tightly. His sunnah and the sunnah of the khulafa. Who are the khulafa? Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, Ali. Question. Are, are the times of these khulafa still exist? The answer is no. Khalas. So what they have done in their time, that is permissible. When their time finished, khalas. Their sunnah has stopped. 
We cannot come and say, oh, because they had a sunnah and they have made some things that may, may people would think that or understand that this is a bid'ah, a new religious act in Islam, then we can do it too. No. There's a couple of things that happened at the time of Abu Bakr and Uthman. That's what I can think of. Maybe other things, but these are the two main things. Abu Bakr in his time, what happened? Jama' al-Quran. He collected the Quran into one book. And this is not a bid'ah. It's a collection of the, the tablets and the ayat and everything into one book according to what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, how did he recite the ayat, the order of them in each surah. So they collected it into one book, the Mus'haf. This is not a bid'ah. And he is the Khalifa. He can do that. Also Uthman, like I said, he didn't come up with something new. He just added an adhan. The same adhan, he just added an extra one for the people to come on Friday. All of the, the, the time of the Khulafa, the Sahaba, the people who came after them, all of them did never came up with anything in Islam. That was it. Because it is an ijma' like I said. By the, by the Sahaba, by the Salaf, that they saw and believed that every bid'ah is dalal. As a matter of fact, they fought anybody, refuted and exposed and warned against, and even fought people who come up with new things in religion. So, uh, I don't know what this guy is doing. Anyways, moving on. <clears throat> Minarets on mosques. Minarets. Bid'ah. The great caliph Umar bin Abdul Aziz innovated this great innovation of the minarets to help the people listen to the adhan. And that That's is a, a good bid'ah. Bid minarets and mosques. Now we've moved into construction and, and structures of, of buildings. How is that even a bid'ah? I explained what bid'ah is. And uh, it's, it's the structure of a mosque. They did it. It's as if he say, it's like him also saying, microphones are a bid'ah, lights is bid'ah, carpets in the mosque is bid'ah, AC in the mosque is bid'ah, uh, speakers in the mosque is bid'ah. All of these are bid'ah because they're part of the mosque. That's not true. These are additions into a place of worship that we worship. Did he change any act of worship? Did he change any ritual in Islam? Add anything in Islam? The answer is no. It is just a structure. It's a different kind of structure of a mosque. How is that a bid'ah? No, rejected. Again. Tayyip, moving on. Thoughts on the letters of the Quran? Did you know that Yahya ibn Ya'mar innovated this great innovation Don't. to help the Muslims read the Holy Quran and he wasn't even from the Sahaba? And that is a good bid'ah. Bida. No, it's not a good bid'ah. That got nothing to do with bid'ah. He said dots in the Quran. How is that a bid'ah? This is about language. It's about, it's about writing Arabic. Got nothing to do with Islam. So if I change the font of the Quran tomorrow, that's a bid'ah? If I change the color of the font of the Quran from black to navy blue, bid'a? Change the cover of the, the color of the cover of the mushaf. It's a bid'a? Where does this end? Where does it start and where does it end? It's got nothing to do with acts of worship or rituals. It's just adding dots so people like you and me can read the Quran better. Allah musta'an. Moving on. Of course, the famous tarawih. Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu innovated this great innovation and he said what means this is a good bid'ah. <clears throat> the famous misconception, the tarawih. Even till today, the ulama, wallahi, one after the other, century after, this, after century, they have explained about tarawih. I've made videos about it before. Many s scholars have made videos about this before explaining tarawih is not a bid'ah. Taraweeh was done in jama'ah by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam in his time. Then he stopped from uh, stopped coming to the masjid because he said, he said, I don't want the people to think it's obligatory. So the people prayed individually. Then Umar, the Khalifa, what did he do? The same act, he just revived it. He didn't come up with something new. He revived the act of worship that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to do in his time. A man came, he said, this is a bid'ah. He said to Umar, then Umar said, ni'mal bid'ah tu This is a good bid'ah. But doesn't mean, he didn't mean that literally it is a bid'ah. No, it can't be because the Prophet did it before him. He meant it linguistically. He meant it linguistically. And like I said, because it's evident, it's a fact that it wasn't a bid'ah. The Prophet did it before him. So no, this is also not a bid'ah. It got nothing to do with good bid'ah. And now the punchline, by the way. Listen to what he's saying. This is what he wants. This is what he wants to tell you now. All this is just tamheed, you know. 
preparing you for the for the bomb. <laughs> Bowl it. You guessed it. You, we guessed it, all right. Complies with the rules of the <laughs> Bowl it. <laughs> Anyways, I'm not gonna comment on that. I think from my expression, you know, you know my my comment or my what I believe. I have a whole lecture about bid'ah. Please watch it if you have time and you're interested in this subject. Watch it. You'll know more. Anyways, now now also another calamity. Listen to this. Listen, listen to this. One second. Where is it? Yeah, listen, listen to what he says. The rules of the religion is accepted, and the bid'ah that goes against the rules of the religion is rejected. The really? messenger of Allah, peace and blessings be. This is this is this what this what pissed me off. Listen. Upon him said what means whoever innovates a good innovation Wait. in Islam will receive the rewards for it no, and that. similar rewards to those who follow it until the day of judgment. That's in Sahih Muslim and Allah Ta'ala knows best. Allah knows best and may Allah guide you and you don't know anything. <sighs> Allah Musta'an, may Allah guide him. If he is deliberately saying this and knowing the truth, then he's a kathab. If and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, this is the greatest of lies. It's very severe. He's not just lying. He's lying against the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. If he means it, if he knows that he's he's changing the word of the hadith, the Prophet sallam said, "Anybody who lies deliberately against me, then his seat in the hellfire is preserved." This is a very very severe sin that you're twisting the statements of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The hadith never said it is a good bid'ah. Never said that. The Prophet said, "Man sanna sunnatan hasana." فَلَهُ أَجْرُهَا وَأَجْرُ مَنْ عَمِلَ بِهَا إِلَى يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ سُنَّةً حَسَنًا Not bid'atan hasana. Nobody ever said that. And the story of this hadith is, is that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was collecting charity for the poor. And so he told the people, give charity. So one man came, stepped forward and gave charity. So everyone got encouraged. And they moved on and they gave charity because of the, you know, how the man was, you know, he was proactive and he initiated that. So the Prophet said, because of that act, he said, Man sanna sunnatan hasan. Anybody who does a good deed in Islam, then he will get the reward of it. And anybody who follows that good deed, will get, he will also get the reward of the people who follow that good deed. Simple pimple. And nothing to do with bid'ah. This is all, this is messed up, man. This is messed up. Anyways, may Allah guide the guy. May Allah guide anybody who watched this video and believed anything this guy said. It was very well planned. I have to give him that. I mean, the smile and the beard and the nice thobe and, and you know, the nasheed behind him. And he's, you know, he's looking very positive and very confident. So people are like, wow, this guy, this guy knows what he's talking about. No, he doesn't. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Anyways, هذا ما عندي. الله أعلم. صلى الله عليه وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين.